Welcome to our channel, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, we delve into the life and legacy of Padre Pio, a towering spiritual figure whose prophecy continues to resonate profoundly. Born Francesco Forgioni in 1887, he lived a life of profound devotion within the Capuchin religious order until his passing in 1968. Known affectionately as Padre Pio, meaning pious father in Italian, he's revered as a saint in the Catholic Church for his remarkable spiritual insights and unwavering faith. Padre Pio's journey began at the age of 15 when he entered the Capuchin order, committing himself wholeheartedly to a life of prayer and service. His profound spiritual journey reached a pinnacle in 1918 when he bore the marks of stigmata, wounds mirroring those of Christ, on his body. This extraordinary phenomenon drew widespread attention and prompted an official investigation by the Catholic Church. Despite initial skepticism, Padre Pio's reputation for holiness and his ability to inspire faith grew exponentially. Pilgrims from around the world flocked to the monastery of San Giovanni Rotondo to seek his counsel and witness his profound spirituality firsthand. Amidst his spiritual duties, Padre Pio also established Corsa Salivo della Sofferenza, a hospital dedicated to alleviating the suffering of others, reflecting his deep compassion and commitment to service. Even after his death, Padre Pio's influence endured, with devotees continuing to venerate him worldwide. The Catholic Church formally recognized his sanctity in 1999, acknowledging his profound impact on the faithful and his role as a spiritual guide. In 2002, Pope John Paul II elevated Padre Pio to sainthood, underscoring his enduring legacy and the universal reverence for his spiritual insights and prophecies. Padre Pio's life and prophecies continue to serve as a source of inspiration and contemplation for believers worldwide, reminding us of the enduring power of faith, compassion, and spiritual dedication in the face of adversity. Padre Pio made numerous prophecies, some of which were meticulously documented and others related orally. One of his most remarkable prophecies concerned three days of darkness, which piqued people's interest in its implications. This prophecy states that the earth would be covered in extreme darkness for three days and nights, with the sole source of light being consecrated wax candles. During these days, it is said that all church opponents will meet their end. This prophecy echoes the Bible's ten plagues, which occurred when darkness fell over Egypt. Padre Pio advised people on how to prepare for these days, including covering windows, reciting the rosary, reading spiritual materials, and establishing spiritual unity and love. He warned against leaving the house and advised storing food to prepare for disturbances in nature such as rains or fire. The horrors that would occur during these three days include hurricanes, firestorms, bad weather, lightning and earthquakes. They would be preceded by two cloudy days, followed by a continuous rain of fire on a very cold night. He assured those who believed that they would be safe, especially if they sought the protection of the Virgin Mary. The approaching three days of darkness signal that catastrophe is imminent and it is time to prepare by stockpiling food, clothing, water, and other necessities. The warning is a significant occurrence, and the early signs indicate that it is a supernatural event that is slightly frightening, but does not endanger anyone. It is as if it were God's ultimate summons to us. According to Marie Julie Jehenne, this will occur when the days are still short, such as in January, rather than in the heart of summer or during the long days of the year. It is still early in the year, not at the end. It is designed to convert individuals who do not believe in God by providing them the opportunity to prepare for a more significant occurrence, such as a huge storm or retribution. On this ominous day, filled with darkness and the crackling of lightning, a segment of Great Britain will bear the brunt of nature's wrath Yet providentially, it shall spare the lands where the saintly lineage of St. Anne's mother once thrived, 
up to the very abode of Mary. The remainder of the populace would tremble in terror as the relentless onslaught of thunder and lightning wreak havoc, penetrating even into the dwellings of those steeped in sin. Within the halls of the Catholic Church, a solemn stance is taken regarding the enigmatic phenomenon as the three days of darkness. It is declared that such mystical revelations are reserved for the faithful, a testament to the enduring bond between believers and divine mysteries. Interpretations diverge amongst the faithful, while some interpret it as a tangible event, others perceive it through the lens of symbolism. Nevertheless, amidst the theological discourse, there lies a pervasive acknowledgement of the prevalent era characterized by defiance against the sacred precepts of God. In the face of such turbulent times, wisdom dictates a stance of readiness, for uncertainty looms large on the horizon. Padre Pio advised on how to prepare for these events. He mentioned that people should pay attention to signs such as very cold nights, strong winds, and lightning. If you notice these signs, you should lock all doors and windows, not talk to anyone outside, and kneel before a crucifix to ask forgiveness for sins and seek the Virgin Mary's protection. It is important not to look during the earthquake, because God's wrath must be taken seriously even by those who ignored his due advice. Due to the spread of poisonous gases by wind on the earth, they would face instant death. Those who suffered and died innocently, on the other hand, would be regarded as martyrs and would be welcomed into God's kingdom. Padre Pio predicted that Satan would prevail briefly, but that after three nights of earthquakes and fire, the sun would shine again and angels would descend from heaven to bring peace to the earth. The survivors will be enormously grateful. In the face of adversity, it is natural to seek refuge in the familiar comforts of the world. Yet let us not be deceived by the illusions of earthly security. True sanctuary lies in the embrace of our Saviour, whose love transcends the boundaries of time and space. Let us turn to Him with open hearts, trusting in His divine providence to guide us through the trials that lie ahead. As we contemplate the significance of the three days of darkness, let us also reflect on the broader implications for our lives. Are we living in accordance with the teachings of our faith? Are we prepared to confront the challenges that may arise on our spiritual journey? These are questions that demand our earnest consideration as we strive to walk the path of righteousness. My dear brothers and sisters, let us not be disheartened by the specter of darkness that looms on the horizon. Instead, let us embrace it as an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to our faith and to one another. Together, let us stand firm in the knowledge that the light of God's love will always prevail, illuminating the darkest corners of our world with hope and redemption. In closing, let us take comfort in the words of Psalm 27 to 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? May we carry these words in our hearts as we journey forth, ever steadfast in our faith and ever mindful of the guiding light that leads us home.